Hi everyone, welcome to another video on IELTS Writing Task 1 Academic. Today we're looking at mixed graphs. As always, I want to remind you the key point about any kind of language learning, whether it's uh, IELTS, whether it's business English, is to remember that language is a habit. So I remind you that you're not here just to learn English, you're here to internalize these ideas. The best way to improve your language is through exposure, through repetition, and importantly, through enjoyment of the material. So if you are looking to improve, I do strongly recommend uh, improved reading habits. And remember, a good way to internalize the language that we talk about uh, in this video for this part of the test, to watch the video again, watch other videos on the channel, they repeat a lot of the concepts and ideas, and that's really important in internalizing the language. On test day, you do not want to be trying to remember grammatical structures or remember the correct way. You want it to be automatic. And if you can do it on the test, you'll do it in the future. And if your plan is to go to university, if your plan is to work uh, at a company where English is spoken quite regularly, you'll want to have these habits internalized. All right, so let's begin. Just to go over what we're going to do today, first we're going to review the key aspects of scoring. Now that's the things that you want to do if you're aiming for that 6.5, 7, or even higher. I'll very quickly review the technique that I use with my students when practicing this. Uh, I will then show you the notes that I would prepare, and then probably what you want to see the most, an example of how I would address this writing task. Now, these are taken directly from the IELTS band descriptors, and these are for the seven and higher. Um, you can check out these details on some of the other videos or on IELTS website, but these are the things that students tend to struggle the most with. Uh, first of all is task achievement, and that means that you're actually presenting the key ideas in the text. You're highlighting the important information in the test and then extending them, explaining it. Typically, I advise that you show the trend that is presented in the graphs or tables and then support it with data from the table. Secondly is coherence and cohesion. To say it very simply, the ideas are organized in a way that is understandable. So you're using paragraphs effectively. There's a clear progression. One sentence clearly connects to the next one in your writing. Finally, we're looking at grammar. Now, we won't be looking at accuracy in this video, but we will look at complexity and range of structures. So it means you're able to use a wide range of sentence structures, sentence types. It doesn't mean that it's wrong if you use simple short sentences. In order to get that higher score, you do need to show range of different sentence structures. And we will be looking at that today. Next, very simple, here's the advice I recommend when you take the test and when you practice. First, take five minutes, analyze the task, look at it carefully, understand what's happening in the data. What is the story the data is trying to tell you? Secondly, Pay attention to changes specifically in value, when it's a value of 30%, 50%, or 100%. So remember, 50% could be going from 100 to 150. It could also be going from 100 down to 50. Another thing to watch out for is the 100% change. So if we go from two to four, all right? If you go from two to six, that's 200%. So watch out for that kind of change in the data. So that's five minutes. Make notes. Make a big mess of the written task in front of you. And then finally, you'll have 15 minutes to write. I know a lot of teachers say, look at the task for two minutes and then start writing. My advice is take the five minutes to understand what's happening in the data 
make your notes, and then 15 minutes will be enough time. In fact, it could be more than enough time. In the past, I have students who just start writing after one or two minutes, and 20 minutes later, they are still not finished. When my students have five minutes to write, they easily finish it in 15 minutes or maybe slightly more than 15 minutes. But as always remember, practice will make this easier. So the more you practice, the faster you will get it done. Now, let's take a look at today's task. As I said, we've got a mixed graph task. And so let's read this together. The graph and table below give information about water use worldwide and water consumption in two different countries. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So right now, I want you to take five minutes and I want you to analyze the data here, make your notes. Remember, think about things that double, maybe things that triple, maybe things that decrease and how much they decrease. Now, pardon me, I've moved things around. Let's take a look at the notes that I have made. Now, you don't have to make notes this detailed. I've done this, so it's a little bit easier for you to understand on this video. So I think the most obvious thing that you're gonna see is that in the first graph on global water use, agriculture is clearly and consistency the main use globally. So I've said here in my notes, agriculture always highest. Then I've gone in the notes, we can see here in 1900 to 2000, in 1900, it was approximately 500, and then it went up to 3000 by uh, 2000. So it's consistent growth. You can see here, it goes in a relatively straight line. There's a couple of changes here. It's not a big thing to worry about. And then I've noticed here, again, very simple, from 500 to 3000, that is six-fold growth. That is massive growth. Um, and it's worth thinking about that. So it's not just doubling. It's like going from one glass of water to six glasses of water. So you can see that is a noticeable change. Secondly, we have industrial. Now you can see here that industrial starts really low and I've given it approximately 200. Don't worry about being super precise as long as you're consistent. I've said that it's relatively flat till, and that should have another L, uh, till 1950. All right, and again, you can see it's already kind of moving up slightly, so I just say it's relatively flat. Uh, and then you start to see noticeable growth. So 1950, then noticeable growth, and then it ends at 1200. Now, this is a key point. You've gone 500 to 3000. You've also gone 200 to 1200. So note that both of them are six fold growth. All right. Even though industrial use is half the volume of agriculture, pardon me, slightly less than half, it's shown the same relative growth. So I have a proportionate amount to industrial. That is one of the main things to watch out for. Just because it's a smaller amount, it doesn't mean that it's unimportant growth. Finally, domestic, very simple. It's always the lowest. It starts at 100, it remains relatively flat, and then just like industrial, it begins to grow after 1950, it ends at 500. So that's five-fold growth. Now, again, it might not be a lot uh, compared to the other two, but it sh still showed important growth. Going from one to five is a lot of growth, all right? But going from five to 10, that's only doubling, right? One to five is 500% growth. So do watch out for that. This is very common across all of the um, IELTS 
task one writing tasks. All right. Um, and, and keep that in mind. If you study business, if you study engineering, this should be very clear to you that there is no, when something increases by 100%, 200%, that's important. Imagine you are an investor and you get 500% return. You would be a very happy person. So think of it that way if it helps. Next, we go down here. You can see water consumption in Brazil and the Congo in 2000. So that's at the end of the time in the um, line graph. All right. Uh, now, you'll notice here we've got Brazil, bigger population, more irrigation, and therefore more water consumption. And we've got the opposite here with Congo, smaller population, far less irrigation, and far lower water consumption. So keep this in mind. Um, Brazil's population is 35 times greater than the Democratic Republic of Congo. All right, so it's 35 times bigger the population, but the water consumption is 44 times higher. So you can see here, um, 359 is 44 times greater than the eight. All right, so why, when the population difference is 35, why is water consumption so much higher? And that's because you have much, much more irrigated land, all right? So there is about 265 times the amount of irrigated land. I will add that in here. There it is, 265 times. So the reason that consumption per person goes up is because the irrigated land, the amount of irrigated land is far higher. Now, if, if this is your first time watching an IELTS video on task one, this is a bit crazy to think about. Watch the video again. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. They all address how we need to look at the data to get an idea of what's happening. Now, next, I will show you how to put this into your writing response. All right. Here is the sample. We'll take a look at this together. First of all, I've got this here. The graphs give information about water use worldwide as well as consumption in two countries. All I've done is remove a little bit of the language. Um, I have sometimes recommended that you just copy the task sentence right here. Uh, obviously, you don't have to do that. Just be careful. A lot of people spend like three minutes carefully paraphrasing. And I would recommend that you don't do that. That is a lot of time to spend on a sentence that really isn't that important for your score. Then, overall, I've got here, although all forms of water consumption increase, all right, so all three of these go up over the 100 year period, agriculture is consistently the main use over 100 years. So this is important. You've shown the overall trend that you want to, to describe. Now you might also mention something about Brazil or uh, higher irrigation um, equaling more water consumption per capita. That's a possibility there as well. I mention it a little bit later. Moving on to the first body paragraph. In the line graph, all right, so I've dis established here, this paragraph is talking about the line graph. In the line graph, agriculture, industrial, and domestic use all showed substantial growth. So I've given an overall for the paragraph. All of them grew, and now I will support with data. So remember that, trend data. Agriculture is clearly the main way in which water is used. Full stop, all right, trend. Data, in 1900, roughly 500 were used, past tense. This grew steadily, comma, reaching 3000 by the year 2000, comma, roughly sixfold growth. I absolutely love to show that. You could say this is 600% growth, I think sixfold is nice and simple. All right, so that's done. I've said it's the biggest one and I've shown the data. 
Then, industrial use and domestic use saw far lower use. So I've made a comparison. They have shown less growth. Comma, starting at roughly 200 and 100 respectively. Full stop, all right? So I've given the data for those two, industrial and domestic. Industrial use remained relatively low until after 1950, at which point it began to grow. So please note, again, past tense, consistently being used, comma, ing, rising to approximately 1,200 by 2,000, comma, also six-fold growth. Then, here's your grammar. Despite being half the amount used in agriculture, it showed the same relative growth. Now, I could say here, despite being slightly less than half the amount, this is fine. Uh, but yes, I could add in there, you know, slightly less than half the amount used in agriculture. It showed the same relative growth. And remember, they're both about sixfold. Uh, domestic use was consistently the least common use of water, full stop, after remaining at 100 until 1950. By 2000, it had reached roughly 500. All right, so by 20, uh, sorry, by 2000, it had reached past perfect. So I've got all kinds of past tense. I've got this comma ing participle clause. We've got despite to show the contrast, and then we've got past perfect here. Going to the final paragraph. The graph on water consumption shows that the more irrigated land there is, the more water will be used. Brazil, with a population of 176 million and uh, 26,500 kilometers of irrigated land, had a water consumption per person of 359. This dwarfed water consumption of the D Democratic Republic of Congo with 5.2 million people and only this amount, they consumed only eight per person. Now I've added in this last sentence, the higher proportion of water consumed resulted in the higher rate of irrigation. Not totally necessary, but I've added that in just to make it a little bit tighter and a lot clearer. So I've pointed out that the more irrigation there is, the more consumption there will be per person. All right, everybody, that's it. I hope you found it helpful. Please remember, if anything's unclear, if this is your first time looking at IELTS Task 1, check out all the other writing lessons on this channel. They're way down at the bottom uh, of the YouTube channel. Um, they will repeat a lot of these techniques and concepts and grammatical structures. Repetition is very important, so please remember, practice. Practice until you get it right, and then keep going until you can't get it wrong. Language is a habit. Um, and another important point I would say here is please read appropriately. I often recommend business news or science news. Um, there's a lot of great free reading material out there. You can check out BBC. They've got great sections on business and science and environment. Al Jazeera English also has very good quality writing on those topics, um, science and uh, business as well. Um, and always remember, just you know, read until you find something that really does work for you. But you will want something with more data in it, and that would be uh, typically science and business. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you if you're still here. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's very appreciated, and I'll see you again soon.